Hello, it's Brent Shard Lover Jalene, and today is Monday, which means it's Macro Monday, and I can't think of a better way to start out your week than being more efficient and effective on your computer, and the best way to do that is use our latest macro, what kind of macro we dropped this morning. Let me show you. All right, this is the macro we're dropping this morning, Excel Custom Questionnaire 2 file. This is an Excel macro that generates a custom questionnaire to complete, and the role field is used to display certain questions to certain users. Once the specific role is indicated, the user can click Generate, pull in the necessary questions to complete, and then answer them. There are three type of questions that I allow in this custom questionnaire, a yes-no question, a list question, where you can list out all of the answer options, and then a free text field. And then once a user has completed all of the answers, they can click Finish to store their answers in a separate Excel workbook. Now that separate workbook will by default be stored to the same location as the active workbook. You can easily change this to a different path if it's easier to see where you want those to end up. You can also, with a few updates to the VBA code, generate an Outlook email and pull in that separate workbook as an email attachment and automatically send that email. This Excel macro creates a great standardized way to collect answers to specific questions, help leading into a formal review process and potentially eliminating process mistakes. Now, if you've yet to see this macro in action, check out our See It In Action video here. If I navigate down further, here is all of the code I run for this custom questionnaire macro. Now, traditionally, I would talk about the code, I would talk about setting up VBA, but you really can just avoid all of this simply by downloading the Excel macro and enabled workbook here. Once this download is done, you can open this Excel workbook. All right, once this Excel workbook is downloaded, this is what you'll see. I went ahead and saved this workbook to a folder off of my desktop just to show you what happens when we actually finish a questionnaire and then generate that separate workbook. Now in the See It In Action video, I really show you what some of these actions look like, but in this video, I wanna show you how to really utilize the features of this workbook and the macros embedded in it. So again, the driving factor for what questions display is indicated on this role field. So whatever role you select will then determine what questions are available by referencing the roles worksheet and then looking to the columns adjacent and the numbers of the questions indicated on the right here. So for role one, for example, I would expect to pull in questions one, two, and three. Now the questions are indicated in the questions worksheet here and each column really holds each question and the details of that question. You can change the text that displays for the question just in row one and updating the column for the specific question number, A being one, B two, C three, and et cetera. And then in row two are the type of questions with the dropdown to give you the option to select a yes, no list or free text field. And I have some examples of how to hear what that would look like. If it's a yes, no, or free text field, you're really just indicating that in row two. But if you're going to select a list option, all of the answers for that list selection will be displayed below, and you can just list those out as far as you want to go. Now, if you want to adjust this Excel workbook to really display what you want, the two worksheets you need to update are the roles and questions worksheet. Instead of just indicating roles here, you can put in some usernames like so. And then once you've made your adjustments to the roles that are going to display here, you can then update the preceding columns to then determine what question numbers you want to pull in. And again, I'll update the questions worksheet to display some questions and some answers I want to collect. And there you go. After some updates, you can make these questions look a lot more useful, especially if we're looking at this as some kind of new hire questionnaire or some kind of pre-hire screening that you want to do before you ask for some kind of resume. Now once you're comfortable with the updates you've made in the roles and questions worksheet, I recommend locking in those answers by protecting these sheets by going to review and then you can head over to protect sheet. 
Now from here, you can enter in a password. It will require that you enter it in twice. Just make sure you enter it the same, and then you can enter in. You will see a nice little lock icon, which will make it so you can no longer delete a field or make any entry until you actually go up and unprotect the sheet. So if you make that password something that only you know, users will then only be able to interact with this questionnaire with what's fixed into these sheets. And again, I recommend doing this for the roles worksheet. So now someone would just really indicate the role that they're selecting. Let's say they're selecting new hire. We would then see that we're going to ask for all of the questions indicated here from this worksheet. Again, because these are locked down, no one can edit them without entering in that password. Then someone would click generate to pull in all of the necessary questions based on the role they selected in cell C5. Now again, where this questionnaire can get more custom are the actions you really indicate in the finishing button. Now let me show you what I have set up for there just by navigating to Visual Basic. Here is all that I'm running for the generate button. Again, I'm looking for the role and then determining what questions are indicated by that role in the role worksheet. I'm then looping through the actual questions in the questions worksheet, looking for the type of question indicated and then the answers for those. Now when we get into the finish button, by default the only thing that is going to happen is I'm going to generate a new XLSX file and I'm going to save that separate file to the same folder location, file location, however you want to say that, as the active questionnaire workbook. Now again, I downloaded this Excel workbook and then saved it to a folder off of my desktop and this is where I'd expect that new generated separate Excel workbook to be saved. You can change that path simply by updating this code line here and you can then put in the full path to the folder you want to indicate just around some quotations. Now one thing that I have turned off is you can actually remove these comments and actually get an Outlook email to display and then pull in this separate Excel workbook as an email attachment. So let's say that someone completed the questionnaire, filled in all of their answers, two things will happen. A separate Excel file will be generated and saved then an Outlook email will also be generated with an email attachment set on there. And you can automatically send that email. So that's a great way to get notified. Someone's completed the questionnaire and it needs review. To set this up, again, to simply remove the comments in this code segment here. Now, one thing you'll notice is I left the comment on the display code line. And really the display is put out here. If you want to do some testing, you want to see what that email is going to look like before you start to automatically send. I always recommend keeping this as a comment because a user would see something appear and then quickly send, which could cause some alarm or confusion. Really all that's going to happen is they're going to click that finish button and the email will be generated and sent. And the other thing you'll have to do is put in an email address in the to field here. I'll go ahead and throw in an email now. And there you go. So that's all that happens for the finishing button. Now one thing I found out while building this macro, and I'll call this out, is when you're trying to save a copy of that macro and enabled workbook, I was really struggling to get it in the context of the XLSX file, so basically where it was macro free. And that's really what I was looking to do. So what I found, and I've seen that people have come across this problem before, is I created a temp workbook in the temp file, and then I used that workbook to then open and then save a copy in that format that I want. Now, the way this behaves to a user is it looks like the active workbook is open at all times, because it is, because I'm just creating a copy and then saving that separate workbook. And then at the very end of the code here, you'll see I just kill that temporary workbook so it no longer exists. I used it for really the needs to copy in a different format and then I delete it. All right, so let me show you what happens when we throw in some answers here and click this finish button. Now again, once you click finish, a separate Excel workbook will be saved. 
keeping all of those answers submitted and also the roles and questions that were in place at the time the questionnaire was completed. That's why I think it's really helpful to have that separate workbook just to really keep a historical reference of when people are completing this questionnaire. And once it's done, you'll get a nice message box saying, thank you for completing the questionnaire. And of course, stay awesome. You can update that in the code. I think I missed that when I was in Visual Basic there. And I also noticed a small typo if you caught that. This is supposed to say work experience, but you can see you can really get in here, do a lot of customization, and then really start to collect some of the answers to certain questions for specific users. Now, as I mentioned, the separate workbook is going to be saved to the active workbooks folder path. And I actually have it in the context of the role that was selected, the date and time. So this really helps you differentiate how the files are being saved and gives you a quick hint as to how it was filled in with that role name right there. And you'll also see after I open Outlook, here is the email that automatically was sent and just some of the details of what that email will look like. You can update all of this whether it's the subject and how that displays, whether it's the email body. And even if you want the new workbook to pull in as an email attachment, I just thought that was kind of a nice way to get that notification right in Outlook and you can quickly open it directly from Outlook. But if you'd rather just get an email alert and then know where that folder path is, where that was potentially saved, you could just navigate over there. All right, so let me show you the customized section here at the very bottom. I apologize for all of the code here. But once we get down here to the customized section, I want to point out some behavior you might be seeing and maybe some slight adjustments that you want to make. For all of the code lines indicated here, I am actually taking the cell color context and changing it to really no fill. So that's why you'll see the white indicated in the answer fields. If you want to change that, you can update these code lines. There's also these code lines here that pull in the text free text for those answer questions. I was hoping that would kind of clear up the confusion, but if you don't want that to display, you can update those code lines here. Again, in the finishing button, if you want to update the file path to not be the active workbooks path, but a different path, you can update that here as well. And then the file name, that kind of format where it's the current role selected, the date and time, if you'd prefer that to be something else, go ahead and make some updates here. And then we really get into the Outlook email section, going in, updating all of these to not be a comment, checking out for that display code line, keeping that a comment, especially if you're planning on just automatically sending this, not causing any confusion to the users that complete your questionnaire. And then the message box field, which I didn't show in VBA, but I do call out in the customized section. I just put in, thank you for completing this questionnaire. Stay awesome. Feel free to update the text here to display what you want. All right. Well, that's all I have for this new Excel macro custom questionnaire to file. I absolutely want to know what you think of this one. Leave some comments on ways you think you'll be using this macro. I absolutely want to know ways to make this better. Don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help implementing this in your processes. Thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to view this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to start using the macro, I've seen the video of a link in the description. If you could do me another big favor, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay updated on any new videos that I'm posting. Like us, follow us on all of our other social media channels. And as always, stay awesome.